Hi, welcome to another video. So this video is the first part for my prototype battery management system. In the summer I tested these batteries and said I would make my own battery management system. So using a PIC microcontroller I'm using precision resistors to measure the battery voltage. So I've got four channels running to four analog to digital converters, four of 30 odd on this current microcontroller. And I've already run into a problem. I thought I'd show you. Now initially I thought this would be straightforward. So I started off with 47k. Hopefully the camera will focus on these. 47k strung in a series. Then I went to 1k, 4k 7s. Ended up with these that arrived from RS Components today. These are 2k. There's the RS part number. These are two kilo ohms, but 0.1% tolerance. So they are 2K plus or minus two ohms. These resistors I've been playing with the last few days, these were 1%. I thought these were my problem to my error. These weren't the problem. And these more expensive resistors didn't fix the problem either. I'll show you why. So you might ask, how difficult is it to measure four cells individually using resistor divider networks into four analog to digital converter channels on a chip and display the results. I'll show you. This display I've got hooked up MC1604C. The schematics are available on the internet and the wiring diagrams. If you need a link let me know. I'll put it in the show more. So this is four line LCD. Here are the four voltages I'm measuring from these batteries using the resistor divider networks. So you think, well that works, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Let me show you with a meter. I'm not sure if you can still see the numbers on this display, but watch this meter. It's the first battery. The ground is at the back corner. First battery. 3.342 and on my display, the top line, 3.335. So for me, that's close enough. This current microcontroller is a 10-bit analog to digital converter. So first cell, 3.34. And on my display, 3.335. Second cell, 3.34. And on my display down the bottom, 3.335. Good enough. Third cell, 3.34, and you can see on my display down the bottom, 3.335. Fourth battery, 3.67 on the fluke, 3.41 on my display. 3.67, remember. So across all four cells, 13.7 volts. Here's a picture of the batteries on the computer. So across all four cells, 13.7 volts. Windows calculator, 13.7 divided by four equals 3.425. And I have 3.41. Was it like, yeah, 3.42. So that's actually pretty accurate. Yeah, I measured 3.6, wasn't it? Let me try again. This last cell, 3.67. Yeah, the Windows calculator tells me I should have 3.42. So the analog to digital converter in this microcontroller is reason it's it's accurate enough for my requirements 10 bit ADT I'll show you the calculations in a minute so how is it I'm measuring 3.42 here not 3.6 and that's the problem it's taken me many hours to suss out that's the problem with using voltage dividers 
these divider networks is dividing the whole voltage, all the cells combined. However, this last cell is more charged up than these other three. I wonder what to do. Do I start putting a microcontroller on each cell and communicate with them via UART to one main controller? But I thought that's just a waste of money. There must be a way around it. When I drew it out to figure out how to work on the problem, I saw the problem here. Or I saw a way to get around the problem. I've got a note here. So this first cell, let's assume it's fully charged, 3.65 volts. This is the only real voltage that the microcontroller sees. All the other networks have been divided by resistors. So four resistors on this big one. So four resistors on this last cell. 2K, 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 2K. A tap off here, so let's divide by four. Three resistors, 2K, 2K, 2K. Divide by three, divide by two. And the first one you don't divide at all, so that's the real voltage. So here's a screen capture. Closer look at the batteries. So to reiterate, when you use voltage dividers, you are dividing the whole voltage. And in this case, dividing it by four here, three, two, and not dividing this last one at all. And as I said, this is the only real known voltage. But if you're using a voltage divider on a setup like this, where the other three supplies can vary, that's a trap. It's a trap I fell into for a few hours. I was wondering why is my ADC so inaccurate the further up the cells I go. It's nothing to do with the quality of resistors. It was simply, it's dividing my whole voltage, not looking at individual cells, which is what I need to do. Here's a look at the code. For those of you that are interested, these are the LCD connections. It'll work on a two line or four line. I'm using Microelectronica's library. There's nothing wrong with it. You will have seen by the decimal places on the display, I'm using floats, not integers. I believe you allow 14 places for a float, certainly more than six or seven for an int. These are my four inputs. So TRIS register, TRIS A, four inputs, analog select, don't forget that one, four analog to digital converters there, I'm using the internal oscillator, which is calibrated, apparently very accurate. It's set to 16 megs. Let's initialize the LCD, clear the display. This is important. For the eight, I've used the ADC initialization advanced feature provided by Microelectronica. And in here, ADC internal VFR H4. That uses the internal reference times four. The internal voltage reference 1024, double at 2048, quadruple it, or times four, 4096. So this is the 4096 volts is the internal battery reference. So the first battery voltage. So the battery voltage equals ADC get sample from channel zero, which is pinned to on this microcontroller. And incidentally, I am using a PIC 18F45K22, right, 16 megs, and that's got a 10-bit ADC. Channel one is simple. Just get the voltage, convert the result to a string, so float to string, and then display it on the LCD. So this battery voltage, 0 0.004 times battery voltage, where did I get 0 0.004 from? Bring up the calculator. So you go standard, no scientific first. If I had an eight bit ADC, so two, Y over X there, two to the power, see the little carrot, two to the power of eight, it break that voltage down into 256 steps, but I've got 10 bit ADC, so two to the power of 10, equals 1024. I'm using the internal voltage reference, so 4.096 volts divided by 
10.24 equals 0.4. So for each part of voltage the ADC sees, it increments by 0.004. So the battery voltage equals 0.004 times the amount of increments it's incremented. Hopefully that makes sense. I did the same for battery 2, battery 3, battery 4, and you saw those duff results I had on the display. So now, as I mentioned earlier, if I use this first cell as a known good reference, take the second cell, multiply the reading by 2, since I'm dividing it by 2, multiply it by 2, then take away this voltage, I should have an accurate reading here. Then, as I say, similarly, take the reading from battery 3, or cell 3, multiply it by 3, subtract battery 2 and battery 1. That should hopefully be accurate. And last but not least, and the most important, because I know this cell is overcharged, take this reading from the ADC, analog to digital converter, multiply it by 4, then subtract this, this and this and see what reading we have. So all I have to do is simply undelete these bits of code or uncomment. If I show you what I added, so battery voltage 2 equals battery voltage 2 times 2 then battery voltage 2 equals battery voltage 2 take battery voltage 1. And I've done that for battery voltage 3 undelete that and then down for battery voltage 4 you can see multiply it by 4 then subtract battery 1 2 and 3 so now if I now if I now program that build and program right that's finished let's have a look at the display and now see how accurate it is right so now you've seen the code how I overcame the problem the problem wasn't cheap 1% tolerance resistors it was a problem with voltage dividers and traps you can fall into. So as I say, you used 1K, 47K, 4K7. I'm not sure of the input impedance to the ADC on the microcontroller, but 47Ks in series, this ADC didn't load it up. So 10 resistors, RS components, 2K, 0.5 watt, point. 0.1% tolerance, metal film, 15 parts per million per degree C, so that, that the, the resistance will change, 15 parts per million per degree C of change, so 15 ppm isn't bad. I understand the input impedance to regular flukes, like this fluke 87, is something like 100 meg, 100 meg ohms. Is it 100 meg or 10 meg? I think it's 100. So let's measure this last resistor. So here's the last resistor of that 10. 2K plus or minus 0.1%. So that's plus or minus 2 ohms. So my leads, short them out. 0.1 ohm in the leads. Ready? 2K, here goes nothing. 2001 so that they're manufactured by Wellin and they cost 59.4p each once you get for the for the through hole resistors like these once you get even higher degrees of accuracy you're better than 0.1 they start jumping up to like 18 20 pound each and more so there's a close look at the display 3.33 3.33, 3.33, That's different, isn't it? Let's see what we've got compared to this fluke. So remembering with a 10-bit ADC, it's only accurate to 0.004. It will jump up in 0.004 increments. I really don't see the point of having a 12 or 16-bit ADC. A 16-bit ADC you can get accuracies to 0 0.001 of a volt. You really don't need to be looking at that third place for a battery management system. Right, here we go. The first cell. 
3.34 and my display 3.3329999 so second cell 3.341 and on my display 3.339999 so nearly 3.4 that's as good as 3.34 third cell 3.342 and my display 3.335999 it's fluctuating 3.34 hopefully you can see that third one down 3.34 is coming up and last but not least the all-important overcharge cell 3.661 on my fluke and my display 3.63 or 1 to 65 just then 3.63999 but jumping to 3.65 Hopefully you can see that 3.65 every now and again. But that's the problem using a float. So if you're monitoring the battery voltage during charging and the code happens to catch that 3.65, you would then stop the charging. But that then begs the question, where do I go from here? I think primarily I need to discharge this fourth cell before I continue charging the others. And there lies another problem. If I use like a 50 amp FET, something like this, on the first cell, driving this FET with this microcontroller for this first cell is no trouble, since I can have the source on the ground, the drain can connect to the positive, 3 volts, 3.3 volts, through a resistor to discharge it. So this cell is overcharged. And I want to use a FET to discharge it through a resistor. I've got to connect my source to ground and the same ground as the microcontroller which means the ground is going to be over here not here. So if I then have this source connected to this ground the drain connected to positive via a resistor and my gate running to my microcontroller when this puts out 5 volts 5 volts will come up to here but the source is already up at 10 so it's not going to turn on now I could use relays but I don't really want to use relays so that's, that's the next quandary I want FETs the solid state so I might have to use high tide drivers or some sort of coupling. Hopefully, hopefully for the electronics enthusiasts of those of you watching, if this source is up at 10, my gate needs to be higher than 10 to turn it on. And this microcontroller can only put out 5 volts. So I'd probably need a boost circuit. I wonder if that would work. A boost circuit on each drive or high side driver. That's my next problem. I don't want to start breaking these links and detaching the batteries as a whole to discharge one. Because if you want to draw 50, 60 amps, then you need these links. I don't want to run the whole lot through FETs, through individual FETs but I might have to if I want to incorporate overcurrent limiting. And certainly for over discharge, you need some sort of limit as well. So I might have to do away with these links and have each cell running to a PCB with enormous traces that can cope with three times C. So that's 150 amps per cell. If you've got any ideas, leave them in the comments. I'll have a read. I'm interested to know what you think. So I've seen on various forums when you get an overcharged cell you discharge that first then bring the others up. 
but it does seem a waste of money charging all the batteries up than having to discharge a cell. I'd like to see each cell charged individually and when a cell reaches the, its threshold, in this case 3.65 volts, you stop charging that one cell. But then with the number of cells that can then get complicated complicated or complex, or at least expensive as far as components go. Each FET has to pass 150 amps. Half the decent FETs available, a sort of 300 amp rating, are out of stock. Let me know which way you think I should proceed. I'll welcome your comments. I'll put the C code for this microcontroller on GitHub and I'll put a link in the show more. If you want to donate a coffee, there's a link in the show more. Uh, and I'm happy to receive your comments. Hopefully you've learned something with a trap for voltage dividers and how to overcome it with simple C programming. Thanks for watching.